Star Wars 7x7 episode 2763. So Tatooine had oceans? Yeah, we've had this referenced in a couple of different episodes of the Book of Boba Fett, and so I'm here to give you the scoop on what that's all about. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So, as I was saying at the top, there have been a couple of instances of characters mentioning the fact that once upon a time, there was actually water and plenty of it on Tatooine. So, you know, I find it fascinating that A, they're doing this, and B, the fact that they've referenced it multiple times with multiple characters. So, yeah, we're meant to pay attention to it, and there's nothing about it in the current canon, but there is stuff about it in Legends, and even then, it's also very limited in terms of what they've said, but it's kind of exciting that they decide to draw on these particular story elements because that's essentially what they're doing even if they're not bringing old legend stuff into canon essentially they are taking concepts from legends and bringing them into canon in their own particular way one of the stories just kind of sets the stage for an early part of the overall story and it takes place in a comic called Dawn of the Jedi colon Force Storm number one. It's basically a story about the absolute early, 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 earliest days of the Jedi Order. And it takes place, this particular portion takes place in the year 25,793 before the Battle of Yavin. So a long time ago, really a long time ago. So this is basically the a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away story for the people who live in the galaxy far, far away. Anyway, so the comic describes Tatooine this way. It says, a lush world where twin suns warm fair skies. A thriving world where the, and here's where we get into pronunciation, the Kamumga, K-U-M-U-M-G-A-H, this is the species that's there, live peacefully in gleaming cities alongside its blue seas. And then we see briefly representatives of the Rakata species, R-A-K-A-T-A, and they have this whole thing called the Infinite Empire, and they show up on Tatooine and take a bunch of the Kamunga for slaves. And that's basically what we know about it from Dawn of the Jedi. And the only other information that you can really get about it is from Knights of the Old Republic, the video game. Now, I have not played the video game, so I'm relying on playthrough stuff for this, but basically the gist is there is a point at which you are on Tatooine and you meet up with what's referred to in the game as the Saiyan people, and there is a situation where the game has choices you can make, basically, and one of them is whether you want to meet with a storyteller of the Saiyan people or whether you just want to kill the Saiyan people. And so if you do a certain task that proves you to be a warrior, you get to meet with these sand people storyteller who would tell you the history of their people it's an oral tradition that's been passed down amongst generations and so you know, there's no official documented record it's just this oral tradition passed down and so i'm sure it's subject to a bit of poetic license if you will and you play as the character revan yeah as in jedi knight revan darth revan you know that whole situation which is another can of worms and you have the droid hk47 translating for you so the storyteller tells the story in HK47 translates it thus. It begins with the ancient times. They were not sand people for there was no sand. The land was green with life and they walked without wrappings. Though the land was beautiful, they lived apart from the land. They built their walls high and saw beyond the horizon. They dared to reach to the stars. There are no words for how long ago this was. It was before the outsiders, before the cities fell, before the builders. Dun dun dun. And just to pause and give you a little context, the outsiders to which the storyteller refers are people who arrived on Tatooine long after all of this Rakata stuff happened. So we're talking 4,000 BBY, right? So Old Republic era stuff, basically. The abduction refers to the fact that the Rakata were taking members of the Kamunga and you know, pulling them off the planet to make them slaves. And the builders are a reference to the Rakata themselves. 
themselves. So the storyteller goes on to say that his arrogant people touched the stars, and this drew the attention of the builders. The builders did not touch the stars, they lashed them to millstones. And to clarify some background on that, so the gist is that the Kamunga were advanced enough that they were able to get off planet and explore in and around their area, and that's what got the Rakata's attention. And so the fact that these arrogant forerunners were able to attract the attention of bad guys, they are to blame for everything that happened. Storyteller goes on to say that great demons of metal stripped the world of its riches until all that was left was the green on the ground. The great cities were lifted away. Those that had used the wealth were taken along with it. Transgressors abducted to serve past the sky, seeding the stars with penitent adaptation slaves. So in other words, in the mythology, the people who were responsible for getting the Rakata's attention were actually the ones who ended up serving as slaves to them. They were the ones who were punished for that crime. The storyteller goes on to say there came a time when the builders were also judged for their crimes. After generations, a plague weakened them, and the time of the Great War began. The builders faltered, and his people realized, the storyteller's people realized, why they had been punished, so that they understood the crime and would now strike down the greater offender. They worked chaos in the machines, so they destroyed themselves. The builders fought back, laying waste to the green that had been misused with fire from above. Soil became glass, grinding to sand, but the fight was long planned, and the storyteller's people were safe. Deep in cave homes carved from the valley walls, they were free. So summarized another way, there was some sort of plague which, with further inquiry in the game, there's no way to tell how long it was going on, but over generations, eventually, some sort of plague affected the Rakata, and they were weakened, and so the Kamunga rose up against them, and there was a huge fight, and eventually the Rakata just retreated and subjected the planet to orbital bombardment that laid waste to it entirely. There is a question, though, apparently, of whether the destruction of the planet was entirely caused by the Rakata, or whether the Kamunga in their advanced civilization and technology, whether their development of the planet and whatnot may have contributed to its ultimate climactic decline, but that's also lost in the mists of time, apparently, and something that the storyteller does not believe and doesn't fit into his worldview. And there's one other point about this particular situation that's worth mentioning, which is that it's believed that event may have precipitated the break in evolutionary history between the Tusken Raiders and the Jawas, that the Kamunga are ancestors to both the Tusken Raiders and the Jawas, and this climactic, climatic event is kind of what helped split them down their own evolutionary path. So the next time somebody brings up the fact that there used to be tons of water on Tatooine in the Book of Boba Fett, well, now you'll know what they were talking about. And that right there is going to do it for this episode of the show. And it just remains for me to say, thank you so much for joining me for it as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items, are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders, may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.